Jordan, uh, thank you for joining us. Did you? Did you? Okay, I didn't know that. That was before I was born, bro. <laughs> Oh, okay. Perfect. Con yeah, congrats. <laughs> thank you, Baba. And thank you, Jordan, for joining us. Um, you're coming back to defend the title that you won two years ago. But just how different is, a, is an away Ryder Cup experience? Uh, very. Mm. Yeah, very different. Um, I love 2014. Mm -hmm. I, I thought um, the most, most probably fun, nerve-wracking shot I've ever hit was the first tee shot in 2014. Um, actually, uh, yeah, it's one of the coolest, coolest moments of my golf career was, was getting started there and, uh, and playing an away game, uh, but representing your country in the Ryder Cup. I mean, that's growing up as a golfer, that's, that's an ultimate goal for us. And um, it hasn't disappointed. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's been, uh, you know, underappreciated by players, not underappreciated, but understated by players mm -hmm. uh, ahead of, um, uh, you know, ahead of the tournament. So um, it lives up and past its hype. Great. And you were here in July, obviously. You saw, saw the course. Obviously, looks a little bit different at the moment. So what changes are out there on the golf course, and how is it, how's it shaping up? Yeah, the rough. I mean, we were able to play out of the rough in July, and uh, if you miss the fairway, you're likely not going to be able to hold the green. And with a lot of greens surrounded by water, you're actually having to really kind of almost lay up out of the rough. So tee balls are are key here. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jordan. We're going to open up to the floor, and we'll begin with number three. If you can come around to the middle row here, please. Jordan, you talk about that first tee shot at Glen Eagles. How how far ahead of time do you start thinking about that shot? Well, I don't think I'll. I don't think of it the same way anymore. I mean, that was the first one on away, and it happened to be away soil. Um, the first tee shot at uh, uh, um, Hazeltine. How am I doing? <laughs> um, first tee shot at Hazeltine was, felt different. It was a different experience. I'm sure this will be closer to that one, just knowing that you'll he we'll hear the, the Europe chants and the Ole Ole chants on the driving range at, you know, whenever we're, whenever we're teeing off, uh, you know, an hour ahead of time. Uh, and, um, and this tee shot's as difficult a first tee shot as we've probably played the entire season so uh that'll that that adds to it but um it won't be till kind of that morning that you'll be thinking of the, the first tee ball and you got a partner with you uh, this time it's not it's not for foursomes so um and it'll be really cold so i could probably hit driver which is a good thing bigger head better <laughs> i'm gonna go to number one over here on the right jordan obviously you can't be held responsible for this given your age but 25 years since the us won on this side of the Atlantic, I mean, you're a pretty clear and, and strong analyst. Can you come up with a reason, if there is just one reason as to why that long gap and long wait might have happened? I would put it simply that they they won more holes, they made more putts. I mean, seriously, uh, as far as our team's concerned, there's only a couple guys that have any kind of scar tissue on playing on away soil, and those guys have won a combined 120-something times. Uh, and account for 20 majors. I mean, it's it's. Uh, um, we're not worried about the the two of uh, the two older guys on the team that that have scar tissue. The rest of us are simply here because and and looking at um, this week as an opportunity for um, us to show that the golfers from the United States can beat the golfers from Europe, and we can do it over here. That's the goal. Um, I've won one and lost one. So whether it's here or there, uh, the point is is whoever makes more putts, uh, whoever shoots lower scores typically wins these matches. And our team is, is extremely solid and have been playing very well. And so if we stay out of our own way and continue to play the way that our team's been playing, uh, we believe that that'll be good enough and, and take care of itself. And no other thought is, is anywhere else. Number three, right up. I'm sorry? Uh, no, I don't think I don't think so. Uh, I'm speaking from my my own point of view, but um, it's it's one of the more difficult golf courses that we'll play all year. So uh, it, it'll play very different from Hazeltine. Uh, but 
and, and a bit different from Glen Eagles, but nothing that is totally unusual for us to see. Um, and the crowds, you know, they're going to be very European. Uh, and anything that gets to you, you're in control of anyways. So, um, again, it goes back to we, we stay in our own lane and we focus on uh, the stuff that we keep talking about in the team room. And we're, we're going to get out and, and, and put ourselves in a mental opportunity for the games to take care of, of the rest. I'm going to go to number three in the front here. Hey, Jordan. Um, what do you recall about being a rookie and for your first time doing this in 14? And uh, Europe has five. You've got a couple, uh, three. Is that an advantage, disadvantage to have more rookies? Uh, and what, what do you remember about just the experience and what advice do you have for the young guys or for the other guys? I, I don't think it means much. I don't think that it's any kind of a disadvantage at all. If anything, it could be an advantage. Uh, guys that are even more excited to get out and kind of um, see what it's like and, and you know get that excited, be paired with somebody. Um, you know, I don't know how, how many how much team golf with a partner that you know Bryson or, or Tony has played. I know obviously Justin with last year and some Walker Cups and Bryson's done the same, but just having that guy next to you rooting for you and, and being in the team room looking at these guys to your right and your left and understanding that they're they're on your side this week for a common goal. Um, I think if anything, it it can be advantageous to be a rookie. So I don't think there's any disadvantage at all. Again, these are guys that have either won majors or had chances to win at, at the highest level or certainly have won at the highest level. Um, I don't think a, a little extra noise cheering for the other side will tone down their ability to be able to perform. And therefore, I, I don't see, based on my experience from 2014 being paired with another rookie, uh, we seem to it kind of seemed to light a fire for us. Once we got out there and loved kind of the way that camaraderie worked out, um, we were able to roll. I'm going to go two at the very back. Uh, Jordan, who, who's behind the business of the Bubba glove? And um, can you just flesh out any other unusual requirements you guys have today? I don't even know anything about it. He just was in the locker room and said, I think I'm going to wear my glove in media. <laughs> <laughs> Is there something else? He said he was told. <laughs> he was. He may have been. I, I don't know. Anything, anything else unusual? Yeah, not particularly. You, you, you've been given special words to use in the press com press conferences. I don't think so. No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you're not in, the, in on message. My agent's not even in Europe, <laughs> so I've got nobody in my ear. Okay, we're gonna go to. I had Zach Johnson in my ear. I, that's about it. <laughs> we're gonna go to four in the middle, just in the back. Jordan, um, you didn't want an extra week off, but you had it, and I'm wondering how you. Took advantage of that? Did you rest a little more? Were there certain things that uh, you know you worked on or thought about uh, leading up to this week? Yeah, I took um, the the in between week off completely, and then I took the tour championship week to to slowly kind of progress each day, do a little bit more, and I was progressing nicely through the playoffs. My game was in, in the best state that it had been in um, until BMW, and I kind of just ran out of gas there. I, I I should have taken more breaks in in the playoffs this year. And I went something like 26 to 28 days straight from before New York through through the that Saturday afternoon of BMW of at least six hour days on the course and gym. And I just I kind of I got real quick with the swing and, and just didn't play well at BMW. But I was able to get that rest, look back on you know the progression that was being made and uh, and continue that going forward. So I, I like um, I think it was it'll it. I don't wish that it happened considering it's the end of the season. If it were the middle of the season, I would look at it as a blessing in disguise. But uh, I certainly wish that I was there at East Lake, no question. And that, if anything, will make me not take that week for granted and to, uh, um, and to work that much harder to, to never miss it again. Mike, one, Karen. Jordan, when it comes to facing that 6,000 plus uh, crowd at the first tee here, how much, if at all, will it help having played the 16th hole at the Phoenix Open a few times? Is there any kind of correlation in getting comfortable with that environment? I think there is, but just in the walk to the tee. Because the 16th in Phoenix, you see that stadium the entire way. When we get on the tee box on the first hole here, you're almost in a little 
kind of U-shaped, U-shaped ditch that's been dug into that hill. And the stands, are, the grandstand's actually pretty far removed from the first tee. So certainly it'll be loud because of the amount of people there, but you won't see it at all. You, you'll see the first tee shot the same way you always see it. Versus Phoenix, if you went there right now versus when the tournament's there, you, it's a completely different golf hole. So there's, on, there's only a you know, small little grandstand, I think, off the left side of the first tee. And so compared to Glen Eagles and Hazeltine, I think it'll feel like uh, more open space, to be honest. Going to go to two over on the right-hand side. Jordan, whether it was highlights or whether you watched it live, what did you make of the scene on Sunday with Tiger uh, winning, and did it affect you emotionally at all? I was, uh, I thought it was a matter of time, the way he's been playing. Um, he's been playing at a level that can win any golf tournament for, you know, the majority of the summer. So um, he went to a place he's won a couple other times and, and really got his putter rolling. And you could see when he's starting to walk those putts in inside 10 feet, that kind of like Tiger step. Um, that we all, try, I guess, naturally try and copy uh, growing up. When you, when you start seeing that, you understand that confidence there is on, that confidence is there on the greens, and that's that's all it was missing was just that you know that that week where he was top three or whatever in strokes gained putting. Um, he'd been chipping the ball really well, and his striking's been been awesome. So uh, the scene coming up the 18th was was pretty amazing. I mean, having been in a, I guess, situation similar. Uh, and it wasn't anything like that when I was walking up the 18th hole. Uh, you see, um, you see what you already knew, which is that he moves the needle, and um, and you saw the reaction from not only um, not only golf fans anywhere, but but also you're just your average sports fan and uh, and your other athletes from and, and other media outlets. I mean, it was it's just it's different. Uh, I was a little bit. I was nervous for them when the fairway started to collapse around he and Rory, uh, because you know you got it guys on a Sunday afternoon, boozed up, you know when it's hot out, just running, you know wanting to. And now when you get the phones out and everything, it it, it just seemed like a lot. I'm glad that they were able to sneak through everybody and get to that green, but um, it was a, a pretty pretty incredible scene. Okay, we're gonna have two more questions. We're gonna go for number four at the back first. Um, George, just to follow up on Tiger, I mean, uh, he looks to be enjoying himself during the practice rounds out there. How much is he enjoying being part of this team? And although this is obviously a team event, how good is it for you guys to have him back at his best? Yeah, I, I, I think even he would tell you he's not necessarily at his best he's ever been, but um, just back in form, uh, good enough to, to win, which is, it's kind of scary that it's not even his best, um, still winning golf tournaments. But... Um, it's, I mean, it seems somewhat normal. I, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I think everybody's been enjoying themselves a lot. It hasn't seemed any different from other rounds that we've played. And, but knowing that he's on your side uh, when you tee it up and he's, he's hitting the ball as well as he is, and then, you know, the intimidation factor that he can bring to it is, is certainly, uh, I would say, measurable off of not necessarily his team Ryder Cup experience, but when you look at, Players that have played in his group when he's playing well, you know, when he's kind of, uh, it's, it's a different um, bottom line than his score. So you ought to think that, you know, you get him in the right setting out here in a team atmosphere and, and playing well, um, that'll that'll make a difference. Okay, we're gonna go Doug number three on the can, left. Can winning an event as part of a team make it feel like a successful year for you as an individual? Yeah, I think if I came out and, uh, and played really solid golf this week. I would feel like I accomplished a lot this year. I'd feel like I went to um, uh, I went to places where I needed to build back up and learn a lot from my own game. And a Ryder Cup is a situation where you're playing almost every hole with the same feels you get on a major championship Sunday in contention. And so to be able to put those to test, and if I can if I can do so successfully, I'll feel like um, I've gained a lot out of it. And the years after I've played in Ryder Cups have been phenomenal years for me. And so I look at this week as very important going forward for next season. Okay, we have time for one more. We'll finish on number one. Joe, sure, we think of the last Ryder Cup and the memories on Sunday are eagles and birdies and roars everywhere. Uh, you're playing this week at a place that's set up very difficult. As a competitor, does it seem odd at all to stage a Ryder Cup on a place with a tough setup? 
Yeah, I don't think you'll, you'll go anywhere else where you see as many fist-pumped pars as you'll see this week. <laughs> I think, especially in the afternoons in these foursomes, when the wind picks up, we played it with windy yesterday, and and it was. I mean, we were playing best ball, and there weren't that many birdies out there outside the par fives. Uh, so uh, it'll be. I don't think there will be as many roars. There'll be your, you know, you'll know who won holes when holes are won. But there were a lot of putts made at Hazeltine, which, you know, from any range, six to thirty feet. Uh, that that was really exciting. But this is a, a unique and exciting test in itself for us players. It may not be as exciting for the fans that are that are there watching. Obviously, um, if their side's winning, then they're, they're going to be as excited. But you know what I mean? Like the, the, the loud roars off of made putts, um, you just won't see that many birdie opportunities uh, as we saw at Hazeltine just because if you miss the fairway, you're fighting for par. Jordan, thank you very much. Have a great week. Thanks, guys. Cheers.